I hate creating custom WordPress themes. I mean, you have to deal with PHP and all of the nonsense that goes on with WordPress, but with headless WordPress, you can get rid of all those problems and create your custom themes using something like React or Vue or whatever you're most familiar with. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about Frontity, which is a framework that you can use that allows you to create custom React themes over top of headless WordPress, and it makes it incredibly easy. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Now to get started, this is kind of the demo of what we're gonna be building out. We're gonna be using the test Frontity blog. As you can see, it has a bunch of different blog articles. We can click on it and we're gonna get this nice fade animation when we change between pages. That's something we're gonna implement in this video. And I'm just gonna show you how to work with the Frontity system. But before we get started, I do want to give a huge thanks to Frontity because they're actually sponsoring this video and letting me show you their tool. And let me tell you, Frontity is amazing. It is completely free to use and open source, and it's just an amazing tool. And I'm so thankful that they're sponsoring me so that I can show this amazing tool to you. So to get started with creating a Frontity project, all you need to do, open up the terminal, open up the folder you want, and just run npx, whoops, Frontity, create. This is just like running, for example, create React app. It's going to do a very similar thing. But to tell Frontity we want to use the directory we're in, the current folder, just patch dash dash use dash cwd. This is going to say use the current working directory, which is the folder we're in. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to set up, just like create React app. So I'm going to pause this here and come back to you when it's done. Okay, here we go. This is where we can actually name our project. We just name it whatever we want. If we just enter, it's going to call it my Frontity project. That's fine for us. We can pick a starter theme to clone. In our case, we're going to use the Mars theme. So I'm going to hit enter there. And then it's going to go through the process of creating and cloning anything. And I'm going to come back to you when that's done. Okay, here we go. And then it says, do you want to receive updates by email? I'm just going to say no. And that's all that we need to do. We now have a complete Frontity project set up. You can see we have a bunch of files over here. I'm going to go over them all. But the first thing you want to do is obviously run your project. So we can just type in npx, I'm sorry, npm run dev. This is going to run this development server for us, just like if you were doing Create React App and you start up a Create React App. This is going to do the exact same thing, but it's going to run a dev server that we can use for our Frontity project. And once this loads over here, we can actually view our Frontity project. And if I just go into the package.json, you can see that's this dev script right here. We also have a build script for building out our production server, and then a serve script, which allows us to serve that production server. So this is essentially the trifecta of all the different commands that we need. So now as you can see, that's compiled successfully. And you can see that we have over here all of the different list of our different articles. We have different categories we can travel to. We have a nice little loading animation that you can see. And we can also click on individual articles. So it's very similar to what we have over here. There's just some minor changes that I've made, which I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. So the very first thing that I wanna do is just expand this out so we can see exactly what we're working with. And we have this frontity.settings.js file. And inside of here is going to be all of the different settings for our entire project right here. So if we go all the way down to the very bottom here, you should see a section called a state with a source and then an API. This is where you want to put the URL for your own current WordPress site. In our case, we're just going to use this test frontity.org site because it's default, it's easy to work with, and it's good for showing the different things we can do. But if you have your own WordPress site, you just want to put in the URL here and make sure you have that wp-json at the end. That way you can actually access the API. And this is all you need to integrate your own current WordPress site into this theme here. Now, once you change that, you may notice some problems that if you do change this, you're not going to have a nature or a travel or a Japan tab, for example. And that's up here inside of this state theme menu. You can modify all of these different links. For example, if we wanted to get rid of this nature link, we just delete this here. We click save and it's going to recompile everything. And then if we just refresh our site, you can see that that nature tab is now completely gone. In our case, we want that nature tab. So I'm just going to back out here. So we have our nature tab here. And now if I refresh our page, you can see our nature tab is back as we would expect. So you can change around all your different tabs here for your own current site in this top hand menu section. Also, you'll notice over here we have photos on ours, but over here we don't have any photos showing up. And you can see this featured section has some booleans we can toggle, for example, show on list and show on post. This is the actual photos. So we want to show our photos on the list and we want to show them on the post. So we'll set both of those to true. And then if we come over here, just refresh, you can see we now have our photos showing up on this list view. And when we click on an actual article, it's showing up in the article view as well. So each one of these has their photos showing up. 
Now this may be a little confusing how all of this is actually tied together because there's a lot of settings inside of here that we modify. And there's also tons of files in this packages folder, which is the container that contains our Mars theme, which is that default theme we downloaded. And inside of here, we have the entire source for that Mars theme. You can see it's a ton of different files. So how exactly does all of this connect together? Well, inside this packages folder is where you have all of your local packages. For example, this would be your local theme. And just like in WordPress, when you're customizing a WordPress theme, you would have that WordPress theme here. In our case, we just have our frontity theme, which is this Mars theme. And it's a great place for starting where you can just heavily modify this as much as you want to create your own custom front end. If you have other packages or components that you create, you will also put these inside of this packages folder here. But for our use case, we're just going to only be modifying this Mars theme. So we're going to do everything inside of this Mars theme source folder. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is how exactly this project gets up and running. Because normally in a React app, you have, you know, your index.js and you have an index.html and you're rendering to the root of your index.html from that index.js. But it's a little bit different inside of Frontity. If we go into Mars here, you can see when we open up this source, we have this index.js file, just like you would have in a React application. And if we open this up, you're going to notice it looks nothing like a React application. We have a bunch of what looks like configuration here, and that's really all we have. We're just exporting this configuration. So how exactly does this giant config file turn into an actual React application? Well, the main thing that we need to look at is this roots here. Roots just defines what we actually want to have as exported from our application. In our case, our roots is theme. And if we come up here, theme is just our components index. So if we go into components and we go into this index.js here, this is the root of our application, which as you can see, looks much more like normal React application. You can see we have title, we have our head, we have global styles, we have our containers, we have our you know, React router kind of stuff going on. So this is your more normal, typical React application you know, main index page. But this index page here that's inside of just the root folder of the source here, this is just kind of setting everything up. So you remember we had this settings here where we had all of our settings? Well, these settings combine together with the settings in index.js to create your true settings. So for example, here we have show on list as false and show on post as false, but in our frontity settings, we changed those to true. So in our index.js, we're kind of putting our default values and then we override those inside of this settings config. We could, for example, change them inside of here and then remove them from this settings if we really wanted to. But generally, this settings file is going to be used for all of your overrides. And in here, we just kind of have all of our different defaults for the theme or for whatever package we're using. So this is all built inside of this state. And you'll notice inside of our state, we have theme essentially. So each one of our state objects has essentially a key. In our case, everything here is going to be theme. But there's other pieces of state inside of this application. Let's just open up the index for the entire application, if I can find that here. And you'll notice if we scroll all the way up here, we have our state, which is coming into our application. We have a bunch of different you know, top level areas. We have our router, we have our source here, we have state.frontity. And then of course, in other places, we may use state.theme. So essentially inside of here, we create our own namespace, which is theme. And we can use that for all the state inside of this application, inside our frontity settings and inside of this index here. So we have our entire theme namespace, but there's other namespaces. For example, if we come over here, we have the router namespace, which has all of our information for the current page that we're on, as well as other routing information. And same with source. This is for like querying the WordPress API. All of this is taken care of for us though by Frontity. So we don't have to worry about recreating all of this stuff, such as querying the API and doing routing. All of this is handled for us, which is really nice. So we don't have to even worry about that. So really this index file here, you never have to touch this. This just has everything set up for us so that we can use it and go along with it. We don't have to worry about this. So now that pretty much leaves us here with this components folder and inside of here is just all of the components for our theme. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory. has a lot of really good comments on what everything is, but I kind of want to point out the main components you're really going to have to worry about. So for example, we have our post component. This post component is getting all of the data from state.source, which like I said, is that WordPress API. So we're getting all of the data from our state.source and we can actually view all that data down here. We have our container, you know, we have links, we have our author being shown up, we have date wrapper. We just have a bunch of different components set up so that way we can view an individual post. Also, we have our list here, which shows each one of our items. So we have a list item. This is what we see on the right here. Each one of these articles is a list item. As you can see here, we have links and you know author information and stuff like that, as well as our actual list itself, which just displays out all of the individual items. As you can see, it's looping through them here. So those are really the most important pages that you're going to deal with, the list, the actual article, and then the article itself within the list. Those are kind of the main three things you're going to modify a lot of when you're modifying this theme. 
Well, let's, for example, say that we want to modify this header section up here. We want to change the color. As you can see over here, we have this really bright, obnoxious pink color. And right now it's a much better looking blue. But let's say we really like that pink color for some reason. Well, we're just going to need to find where those styles are. In this case, they're going to be in this index.js inside of our components folder here, this index.js. And we have our head container, which is this blue section. And if we scroll down, we have styled component set up so we can actually style this with styled components. As you can see, we have this blue color defined here. Let's just change this to be, for example, pink and save. And if we come look over here, you can see that we have a pink color showing up and we can use whatever we want. Let's say that we wanted maybe red and we can save and you can see we have a nice red header on the top. So we've instantly kind of changed the feel of our site from that blue to that red just by changing these few styled components. And we can modify any of the styles that we want inside this entire application. It really doesn't matter. This is just kind of a starting point, which is a pretty decent looking theme. And you can just go from wherever you want and create whatever you want. Now, the next thing I really want to show you is the power of using something like React instead of using PHP as your you know, WordPress theme, because we can use all of the React ecosystem. For example, let's say that we want to bring in something like React Spring to do animations for page transitions. So when we click on nature, it'll do a nice little fade transition as opposed to just kind of instantly snapping between the pages, which doesn't quite look that nice. So let's do that now. We can just come down here. I'm going to close out of this site. We can say npm i react spring. Oops, spring. Hit enter. That's going to download React Spring for us. And what we need to do is we need to go all the way up to where we have our routing, which is in this page we're already in, the index.js. So if we come up here, we can import React, whoops, from React Spring. And what we want to do is we want to get use transition. This is going to allow us to transition from one page to the next. And we also want to get animated, which is just going to allow us to apply the animations to our transition. So once we have those done, let's just rerun our site, npm run dev just like that this is going to reload our application on localhost 3000 it'll take a little bit but that's fine let's just scroll down here a little ways to where we have our theme and what we want to do is we want to use transition and we're going to create a variable called transitions and we're going to set it to use transition and inside of here what we need to do is we need to pass it the things that we want to loop over in our case we just have one thing we want to loop over and that's going to be our link Whenever our link changes, essentially we want to do a new transition. So we can say that we have our link as our thing. By passing null here, we're essentially saying we have one thing and it is this thing up here. So we don't have to worry about getting a new thing. We just have our one thing. We pass null saying we have one thing. And then what we want to do is we just want to put in our transitions. And in order to do that, we can just say enter is going to be the transition we have when we enter into something. And then we have leave, which is the transition from when we leave. And then we also have from, which is where we actually start from. And these right here are just going to be JavaScript objects where we put our CSS styles. In our case, let's say we have an opacity of zero, which is where we're going to start from. We start with no opacity at all. And then when we enter, I want to just change that opacity to be one because we want it to be fully opaque. And then finally on the leave section, what we want to do is we want to remove our opacity. So we're going to set that to zero. So we can say opacity of zero here if I spell that properly. And now we have our transitions set up. Now, in order to actually do our transition, we need to come down here where our switch is, and we need to wrap this inside of our transitions. So inside of here, let's just do transitions.map because this is an array. In our case, it only has one thing, but that's perfectly okay. And what we wanna do is we wanna get the props and we wanna get the key. The key is going to be up here, this state.router.link. So whenever this changes, so whenever we change our page, our key is going to change. And props is just all of our animation properties. So we have props, we have key, and this is going to be a function. And in here, we're going to just return all of this switch information inside of here. There we go. Let's just get our indentation properly working. And now to animate things, we need to use animated, which we got from React Spring. Just say animated.div. And we need to put all of our switch information inside of here. And let's just save here to get our facing fixed. And now all we need to do is specify what our style is going to be, which in our case is those styling props. And then we specify our key to be equal to this key here. And essentially, whenever our key changes, it tells us that we need to do our animation for this section. And our key, like I said, is this router link. So every time our page changes, it's going to trigger our new animation. So now let's just save this. And you can see immediately we have that nice little animation. If I click on one of these pages, you'll notice something interesting though. If I just expand this out, you notice that we kind of have both of these pages showing up at the exact same time side by side. And the reason for that is because this transition here for leave is also showing up on the page and it's fading out and the other one is fading in. So at 
some point while they're both doing their fade, we have two different pages on the screen at once. We don't really want that. So all we need to do here is just set our display equal to none. And this is just essentially just going to remove this from our page when we do our leave animation. And now if I save and I click on nature, for example, you can see what we had there just disappears and this other one fades in. And that looks really good. As you can see, we're able to switch between all of our different sections. And it doesn't matter what we do when we change pages, it's immediately going to do that fade animation, which looks really nice. And from here, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Like I said, this is just a React application, but it's using headless WordPress to pull in everything else for you. The final thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is actually deploy this site to Vercel. So as you can see over here, we have an actual site running where we can actually view and change our code and do whatever we want. This is a public site that anyone can view. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that using Vercel, which is really easy to do with Frontity. So let's just come in here. We're gonna create a new file. And this file is just gonna be called vercel.json. This is like our config file for Vercel. And inside of here, all we need to do is display our version. In our case, we're gonna use version two. And then we need to say what we want to do for our builds. So our builds is just gonna be an array. And inside of here, we're just gonna have one object because we only have this one build. And it's gonna have a source, which is equal to our package. JSON. This is essentially the source of where all of our code is. So we can see we have dev, build, serve, all that kind of information in here. And then we just say that we want to use, whoops, use at frontity slash now. And essentially this is a package that frontity created, which just makes really easy deployment to for cell possible. It has all the code in there that you need. It just wraps it all up in this one package. So you don't have to write it out yourself. Now, if we save, let's just end this down here. We can run npx vercel login, and this is to log you into your Vercel account. First, you'll need to create a Vercel account if you don't have one, so just go onto their site, create an account. And then with that done, you can type in npx vercel login, hit enter. This is going to run for a little bit. There we go, I need to enter my email, say kyle at webdevsimplified.com. And then it's going to say it's sending me an email and I need to check that, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I confirmed my email and everything, and it says it's connected me to Vercel, and everything's good, blah, 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 blah. Don't have to worry about it. Now, in order to deploy our site, all we do is npx Vercel. Whoops, Vercel. Hit enter, and this is going to do all of the work that is created to deploy our site. So it's gonna get to Vercel ready, it's gonna get the deploy ready, and then it's gonna ask us a few questions for how we wanna set up our site. So it says, do we want to deploy the site in this directory? Yes, this is the site that we want to deploy. Which scope do you want to use? We're just gonna deploy it to my own personal scope. And do we want to link this to an existing project? Obviously not, we don't have any Vercel project, so we'll click no. And then what is this project's name? We can call it whatever we want. I'm just gonna say front, frontity demo WDS, hit enter. And then in which directory is your code located, just leave this as the default, hit enter, and it's going to do all the work for us. And this is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna come back to you when this is done. Okay, and there we go, it finally finished running. And if we just scroll up a little ways here, you can see that we have our production site. It says production and it has a link to our site. We can just click on this. It's gonna open up our site on the side. And as you can see, this is the production version of our site with a production URL, and it has all of the stuff that we need inside of it. For example, we can go to these different pages. One problem you may notice though, is if you go to a tab, it'll just load infinitely. The reason for this is we're using their test blog, which has course set up. So we have a little bit of a problem with that, but if you're using, for example, your own blog instead of this blog, the test blog, you won't have a problem with cores like this, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. This is just a problem because we're using the test blog, which is not meant for production, obviously. And that's all it takes to create a WordPress theme using Frontity and React. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out Frontity, linked down in the description, and create your own frontity braced project. Also, thank you again to Frontity for sponsoring this video, it really means a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.